No more than 20% of what I brought to the hospital were actually necessities. Most hospital bags are overpacked. When people tell you certain things are necessities for hospital bags, take it with a fist of salt. You really don't need that much. The hospital practically provides everything you can imagine, including phone chargers if you forgot to bring one. Hi, my name is Tian. I talk about my motherhood journey to hopefully help some others along the way. If you're looking for mom tips, please be sure to subscribe. It's really hard to share why I feel the way I feel about the hospital bag without sharing a bird's eye view of my birth story. So here is the one minute version. After a very full day, right before I was about to go to bed, my water broke and my contractions started very early on consistently. So I never had the experience of laboring at home and we went to the hospital really early with a trunk full of stuff. I'm talking pregnancy pillow, yoga ball, mama bag, baby bag, snack, bag in a cooler and labor tool bag, most of which I did not even touch or have probably only used for a tiny portion of my labor. So here I am looking back at it a year and a half later. There are so many things I could have consolidated. I just didn't know what hills to die on. And there are things that I totally did not know I will need to bring to the hospital that are needed immediately after birth. Today I'm sharing all of that with you so that you don't make the same mistakes as I did and you will go into your hospital birth experience with confidence. So let's get into it. First of all, let's talk about the actual bag slash suitcase. Contrary to all my research on hospital bag before I gave birth, in real life experience, it is so much better to have one large suitcase that's well compartmentalized instead of having multiple bags that are individual items. This is the single biggest regret of my hospital bag preparation. We had so many individual bags and items. When we got to the hospital, it took my husband several trips from a parking lot to the labor and delivery section of the hospital in order to just get us settled because there were so many things to carry in. But the grace of all of this is that hospitals usually provide you a cart. Yes, they provide you a cart in case you have so many little items, but it's just so unnecessarily complicated to have so many bags. Instead, imagine if you just have one large suitcase that you can just drag around, that would be so much easier. Next time I am 100% utilizing the compact packing organizer as well as the hanging toiletry bag. These are so helpful to compartmentalize the suitcase and it makes packing and unpacking like a breeze. In the large suitcase, you can plan for one section for mama, one section for baby, and then one small section for the dad. Prepare to bring a backpack to contain all your important documents. Apart from that, just bring a large water bottle with a straw. The principle is to leave as many hands free as possible. So definitely be sure to consider using a large suitcase instead of many individual bags and suitcases. Now let's get into the actual content of the bag. For mamas, prepare for an overnight trip. Think comfort. Bring your most comfortable clothes and most stretchy pants and some nursing tanks. I always recommend nursing tanks over nursing bras. It just saves some steps. It gives you easier access for breastfeeding. Although to be really honest, I was actually mostly topless the first few weeks postpartum from the time when I was at the hospital all the way to home because airing out your boobs is the best way to prevent chapped nipples other than nipple butter. Having your boobs aired out with nipple butter is the best combo to help you ease into breastfeeding with much comfort. I never waited for soreness to kick in before I started doing it. I just did it from the very beginning and the nurses have seen them all. Don't be shy. No one is judging you. The other piece of clothing that I would advise you putting in the hospital bag is disposable undies. The quality of these is just so good. I didn't even get through the whole pack because I was reusing them over and over again. As long as they're not stained or the part where it comes in contact with the glue of the pad does not thin out, I would just keep reusing them. However, I did not bring it to the hospital because I just never thought that I would need it immediately. The hospitals, they gave you those really loose ones 
and they're great in some ways but it's definitely not as comfortable and good quality as these ones. They also provide a tiny bit of compression around the tummy so that actually feels really nice because it's like a little hug and the hospital ones they do their job but they're just so loose and flimsy. Something I really dislike about the hospital birth experience is that after you gave birth when you're transferred to the postpartum section the nurses will just go in and out there's always someone in your room and you can't really sleep well. Mass and earplugs are absolutely necessities. The only sleep you get, you need it to be really, really good. To give you some context, after giving birth, I was feeding my baby every two hours. For us, each feeding took one hour. So I only have that one hour break in between if I need to use the restroom or if I need to eat something. And sleep is just a luxury. I probably slept like two hours in the total of the two days I stayed at the hospital. Someone's coming in to refill my medications, someone's here to check the vitals, and then the lactation consultant comes in to say hi and tell you all the things about breastfeeding. And the next thing you know, someone comes in with your food to deliver your meals. In this part of the video, I sound as if I'm mostly complaining, but deep down, I'm actually very grateful for the care I receive from the healthcare providers and hospital staff. But it's definitely caught me off guard how little alone time I got after birth. That's all I'm saying. So bring your mask, bring your earplugs, and make those sleep good. Bringing pregnancy pillow has become such a big trend. I trusted it and I regretted it. It is humongous to bring to the hospital to begin with. It takes up a lot of space and it's one individual item. Remember what I said about the one large suitcase? This will not fit in. I never needed it once at the hospital. So in case you didn't know, you're really supposed to be at home for early labor and when you get to the hospital, it's when things start to get intense. So you don't really have time to just lay around and stay comfortable, be on your iPad. You go to the hospital because things are heating up and you are about to deliver the baby. It helps your body to just progress into labor a lot better when you're moving around. So there's not really a time to use that pillow because you're not just laying around having a good nap. Before asking for the epidural, I was moving around as much as possible to open up my pelvis. So for however much space it takes and the hassle of bringing it around, I really don't see the necessity of it. Another bulky object that I regretted bringing to the hospital was my yoga ball. It was super helpful to have it, except I did not know that the hospital already provided it. And if I decide to bring in my own, I even have to sign a waiver. I just don't know how I would have found out because at the time it was COVID and the hospitals do not provide hospital tours, which was kind of a standard procedure for pregnant women to schedule an appointment to come look at the hospital so that they know what is there and what is not. I guess I could have called and asked for details, but I just was not thinking about it too much. So do check with your hospital whether they have these tools that you intend to bring because if they have it, why bother bringing it? In my labor tool bag, I have LED candle lights, I have essential oils and diffuser and speakers. Basically think about what would help you feel relaxed, what would help you feel cozy. The state of relaxation is so important for the process of delivery. It signals your brain that it is safe to deliver the baby, so the progress of delivery will be much quicker and smoother. I turned the bathroom of my hospital room into the labor cave where it feels cozy and the light is dim. It's where I have hot bath running at all times so I can jump in anytime to just help with the pain relief. You can't really do much in the actual room, but you have a lot of flexibility with the bathroom. So you can really make it super cozy and induce that state of calmness that is going to help your labor. A funny object that I included in my labor tool bag is a comb. This is another trend. People say the pain of pressing the comb into your palm distracts you from the pain of your pelvics open up. It's a nice theory, but in reality, the pain of labor was distracting me from everything else. There is no feeling on my palm, no matter how hard I press into it. Another case of these crazy trends being sometimes not as trustworthy. 
one thing I did right is I returned my labor gown last minute that I ordered from Amazon because the hospital gown provided by the hospital worked great. They designed it perfectly well. It's loose. It's easy to untie from the back. It may not look best. It's not picture perfect, but it serves the purpose to help you paint the picture between getting in and out of a tub and needing Chris to help me with counter pressure on my hip and me needing to sway back and forth and move around it is so much easier to have something loose that is easy to take off when you need it and easy to put back on when you need it and honestly i know plenty of moms that just end up wearing a bra because it is so intense you just don't need some really nice clothes after the labor and delivery process you will end up wearing your own clothes that are very comfortable which i'm going to talk more about in a minute the gown that is provided by the hospital is super sufficient and if in any case you need to go into c-section those gowns are very suitable for surgery you don't even have to get changed a staple in my pregnancy and postpartum journey is these pairs of leggings i have so many of them i wore them throughout the entire pregnancy as well as postpartum in fact i'm still wearing them these days because they're just so comfortable and buttery soft they're one size super stretchy i just love investing in things that I can use beyond just the pregnancy and postpartum period. This is something very important to know for the clothes you decide to bring to the hospital. Make sure they're loose enough and stretchy enough because despite delivering a baby out of your body, you are still going to have a late second trimester sized tummy. It will take its time to shrink back and breastfeeding is a process that will actually help your tummy shrink back a lot faster. But the point is you need clothes that can stretch enough to accommodate for that. Some women really benefit from compression legging. I never needed it. I actually don't really like the feeling of tight clothing on me. So I found these leggings super sufficient. So I highly recommend it to anyone. I brought a cooler full of snacks and food. This is something that you need to check with the hospital or your healthcare provider depending on their policy. They may allow you to have food or water. They may not. I never gave it a second thought. This is how it's always done in the existence of human history. If a woman is in labor and they're hungry, they eat. So I just ate and I <laughs> and I threw everything up. When I was at seven centimeters dilated, I threw everything up. I was shaking uncontrollably. I'm talking even the lemon honey water that I brought all of it. The body just does its own thing. This is another example of how you can plan for the absolute best with all of your knowledge and the reality just turns out completely different. What's super helpful is that the hospital provide ice chips which are essential for the last stage of pushing when the breath work was very intense. My mouth was super dry. Two things I regretted not bringing to the hospital with me one is a peri bottle and the other is my own nipple butter. So the hospital peri bottles, they squirt water straight, whereas the Freedom Mom ones have an upside down spout. I wish I had it with me because then every toilet trip would just be a lot easier. And the thing about nipple butter that I didn't think about is that I would need it right away. As soon as I start breastfeeding, I start needing nipple butter because the best way to prevent nipples from trapping is to prevent. And that means using it as early on as as possible. The hospital does provide refined lanolin, which is not as good quality. I personally believe that I should have brought my Earth Mama once. If I'm putting out my nipple, my baby is eating it too. So I want it to be the best quality possible. Next up is the baby bag. I really don't have much to say about it except that I brought way too much stuff. I brought my own diaper, I brought several outfits, I brought burp cloth and sleep sack, all of which were not really necessary because the hospital has everything imaginable for the baby's use. In fact, I would even recommend that you bring an empty baby bag to bring stuff back home from the hospital. They have everything and you paid for it. So don't be shy to ask for anything you will need. They may not look the best, but it kind of helps to have a little less stuff to drag around. I'm so glad you're still here with me because what I am about to share with you is not inside the hospital bag but it is inside your mind that is going to really help you and serve you in this my hope is that you will walk into labor with a healthy balanced viewpoint
talent that I didn't have. In the middle of labor, I felt like a failure when I asked for epidural. I needed it to get some sleep when I was facing the risk of an exhaustion-induced C-section. It turned out to not be the unmedicated birth that I envisioned, so I cried miserably in guilt. I felt like a failure. I was in a state of fight and flight when my biology needed to shift into a state of rest and relaxation in order to help my labor progress. I had a lot of knowledge, I'd done a lot of research, but a lot of them really didn't serve me because I held those as standards against myself. What I would definitely do next time is to be educated but hold my visions loosely. People always like to say the only thing certain about your birth story is the fact that it's not going to be certain. And now that I've experienced it once next time, I know much better how to walk into that process expecting a perhaps different outcome. And mamas, I hope that for you as well. My baby is awake, so I gotta wrap this up. I really hope that you find some of the things I share helpful and that you will walk into hospital birth with confidence. I really wished I could tell myself a year and a half ago that things really do work out in the end. And I believe that for you as well. Thank you for watching this video. Before you leave, be sure to hit subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. 